we're back to the man cave. Today we're going to go over the building of the bar. Not necessarily the building itself. The building is is nothing special. It's just two by four construction, 16 inch on center for the walls. Uh, I did go eight feet eaves or eight feet walls, just because I didn't want to feel. Most sheds are seven feet, so it's kind of cramped. I did use trusses. Uh, so I could have a vaulted ceiling over the where the people sit at the back of the bar. So when I decided to build a bar, it started out really simple. It wasn't even going to be a separate building, which it turned out to be. It was going to be just basically an outdoor deal with four seats, and that was it. But after I started thinking it and started planning it, it just turned into a whole other animal. So. When I went to build the actual bar, there's not a whole lot of information out there online about building the bar. There's a lot of time-lapse videos of people building bar, which is very informable and it helped me a lot. Uh, but to actually sit down and look at dimensions is a whole another ball game. So what I'm going to do today is, I'll first I'll turn the camera around and I'll pan the bar and kind of explain things on how it's built. And then I, I drew some pictures, and that'll hopefully help you guys out a lot more. So, let's do that. Alright, uh, in previous videos I've said, you know, always build an L-shaped bar if you can. Only because people always, it's cramped on that side, uh, the wall is only about two and a half feet behind you. But people love sitting over there because then they can talk across the bar to people that sit over here. So I highly recommend putting an L-shaped bar in or a U-shaped bar if you, if you have the room. But the bar itself, it's two heights. Uh, the top height is obviously your the bar countertop and then the bottom is, I don't know, for prep, I guess. Uh, it's very convenient to have the two heights. Um, then I have basically different compartments for the different things underneath here. And it's, you know, the first compartment holds microwave, stereo, computer. Then I have two mini fridges, and then I have a compartment here for trash cans, which I just had a party, if you can't tell. But on the service level, I also have outlets that are black so I'm not sure if you're getting a good picture of those and I have them every two feet and that's mostly because people need to charge their cell phones all the time and not to mention you'll use it for other things also uh, any kind of extra accessory uh, crock pot anything like that you will use the outlets so uh, make sure you get those put in we come around here to the front I want to get the side picture here if I can the side of the bar looks like this, and this will make more sense when uh, when I show you the drawings. But you have an overhang so the chairs can scoot up in there. The reason I don't have any kind of foot stool, or heck, I don't know what you would call it, at the bottom, is because I'm just limited in space, so I like to be able to push the chairs up in there. I do have coat racks under here or hooks coat hooks under each area where there's a chair and that's for uh, coats that people normally don't use but the women will put their purses on that and it kind of clears up the bar when they do that which is nice alright so that's what it looks like okay so here's the bar this is what I just showed you you got your four compartments uh, trash can, two mini fridges, the computer, microwave, stereo. Uh, the black represents the lower bar and the red is the upper bar. So, when you look at it dimensionally, we got this. So, there's a five and a half inch space between your lower and your upper bar. Uh, the lower bar is 36 and a half inches high and these compartments are two foot compartments 
And what I did was instead of building like a wall, like 16 inch on center, I saw a guy online and I, I can't even remember his name. I tried to find him so I could give him some credit. He built two foot boxes on the ground out of two by fours. So just simple squares. And the square would just be like this. So two foot by two foot by two foot by two foot. And then from there, he added vertical two by fours coming up to build his, his uh, two foot areas, which work out good because my mini fridges are 20 inches. And then with the two by four up in these corners, it gives it exactly the room it needs to fit in that comp that little box perfectly and uh, so that's why I did that so any I thought about putting the back wall making it uh, 16 inch on center 2 by 4s but after I started building these boxes it worked out really well and this is kind of a side view of it and the side view I think tells you a lot more so we got the bar top itself is 20 inches wide. The lower bar from where the bar, the top bar stops to the end is 11 inches. And it's 5 inches from top to bottom. The whole under bar is 23 inches, 36 and a half inches high, 41 overall, and then 38 from the bottom of the floor to the, the 2x4. Now that 2x4 I cut at an angle, so it looks a little like this. Uh, it's obviously 2x4 is 3.5 inches thick. This is 2 foot wide and I put a taper in and it gets down to an inch and uh, 3 quarters on the end. And the reason I did that is for clearance for your bar stools. Bar stools, not all bar stools are created equal. Every bar stool, there's no universal size. So you can get a 24 inch bar stool, a 29 inch bar stool, a 30, a 32, a 28. My bar stools are 29 inches high from the top of the seat to the floor. They say you need 10 inches from the top of your seat to your bar. That gives you enough room to scoot your chair in and your thighs won't hit the bar. And that's worked out pretty good. Bar stools, on a side note, are going to be your biggest expense when you build a bar. There is no such animal as a cheap bar stool. Uh, the ones I got, I got from a restaurant supply company. And it really worked out well because they got them on a trade-in. And I got them for, I want to say, $30 a piece. And they are bar quality bar, bar stools, which normally run, I want to say, just under $200 a piece. So, like I said, that is your biggest expense, by far. But as you can see, when I built the boxes on the ground, the two-foot boxes, then I came up with the two-by-fours. And there's three two-by-fours on each box. That way, it gives you plenty. So it's basically, uh, instead of 16 on center, it's two-foot on center box. And... I have two 2x4s that hold in this top brace, which makes your bar extremely sturdy. I also double layered both bar tops. So this is a two three quarter inch piece plywood. Uh, so you got an inch and a half of plywood on the top of your bar, which makes it extremely, I mean, it's, I've, I've stood on that bar many times building the upper bar. Uh, it doesn't give it all. So that's the basic construction of it it's, it's really really quite easy to do once you get started there's another thing though like we were talking earlier you want to wire your bar and when I say wire your bar to power your mini fridges and everything else so I put two different feeds in because I, I don't know how many amps were going to be drawn off the the top outlets when I was building the bar but the bottom outlets you're running two compressors for your refrigerator and then you also have your microwave stereo computer over here uh, there's one thing I have learned 
you never can have enough outlets. There's no such animal. The more outlets, the better. People use power. Uh, now, on my L shape, when I the bar comes off as L over here, I have my kegerator, but my kegerator is quite a bit bigger than the two foot on center, so I did have to modify the bar to put the kegerator in. Uh, I think the the overall dimensions of the kegerator are probably closer to I don't know 28 inches wide uh, it's because my kegerator you can also put your CO2 tank inside the actual refrigerator it saves room on the outside but that's the the construction of the bar um, again I, I put two different circuits because you don't want to be blowing your circuit breakers all the time. So with that said, let's see if I can think of any problems I came across when I was building this. When you are building your bar, obviously you need this as level as you can get it. This, this is where your bar top is going to sit this this cross member and this cross member so always you know level everything up as you're building it uh, plumb these guys up also it just everything you're building from the ground up so if you if your ground is plumb and level then the rest of it should be plumb and level also it just uh, it'll make life so much easier for you also wanted to show you guys that there is a lip on the front that is a one by I want to say I cut it down to two and a half inch and then I also put this little lip on the back end just so things don't slide off the bar I just use a router and round it off the sides here and I used and I also rounded the inside of that also then this front piece is just a one by four and that runs obviously the length of the bar also just a fascia I put a 2x4 on this end because um, I when I walk around I constantly grab it to swing swing around there and it's uh, nice and sturdy and I don't know if you can see that lip right here oh I guess I, I did forget this little guy too where the spill mats are is actually the first piece of plywood there's two pieces of plywood stacked first piece is here this is the second piece I just lowered that uh, just so I could put coasters and the spill mats on and that also goes all the way around the bill bar the kegerator was a second bought I guess I didn't have a kegerator originally so I did have to notch it out and then I had built that uh, one by on top of it because the cut was pretty crude that I made around the tower and uh, I just cleaned it up it looks a lot better alright well that's about it so like comment subscribe if you guys have any questions I can uh, help you out there feel free to ask other than that I want to do a video on the kegerator so that'll probably be next especially since I ran out of beard the other day and today I'm gonna go pick up a new keg but I think I'm gonna try to install a uh, power cooler this kind of eliminates warm beer the first pour you get out of a home kegerator is usually foamy and warm because cold air drops and nonetheless I think that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna go pick up some parts today when I pick up the keg and we'll go from there so uh, thanks for watching